Well, how's this for a chat? Three of our best all in one place at one time for you this uh, holiday Monday, none other than Senator Matt Canavan. Uh, he joins us now, as well as Linda Scott, here in the, the Man Cave. Happy Easter to you too, uh, my friend, in the screen in the background. And Graham Lloyd, who is, of course, the Associate Editor of the Australian Newspaper. Rather than just a little quick hit on one issue, he's going to be here for lots of different issues. Mm. All right, Matt. How many people does it take to put in a light bulb? Well, apparently it takes two planes for the amount of ego that needed to go and announce a billion dollars of our taxpayer dollars uh, going off to industries that are in part and companies backed in by billionaires and former prime ministers because that's where the money's needed. Well, don't laugh, uh, Paul. A few years ago, uh, that was a, a question uh, at Senate Estimates about light bulbs. I think it was three or four people we needed to change the light bulb <laughs> in electorate office somewhere around the country. But, yes, the waste in government knows no end here with uh, two planes. I mean, look, I've got no problem with the Prime Minister and his ministers from time to time using private airlines to get around the country. They're busy people uh, and commercial flights don't always work. But... You can't tell me they couldn't have saved here. They could have had some staff go commercial or just not need that many staff. They, these, these jets can fit eight or nine staff usually uh, with the jump seat in the middle. So I don't see how this adds up at all. And what makes it, of course, a lot, lot worse is these are the same people telling us all that we can no longer buy a Ford Ranger or a Toyota Hilux uh, without paying a massive penalty under their vehicle emission standards. And yet they will, they think nothing of just taking two, uh, of course, fossil fuel, fuel powered jets uh, to a press conference for publicity. Either they don't believe in climate change and all their, uh, all their demon like uh, predictions, uh, and they just, they just, it's just all just a front, or they're just massive hypocrites, total hypocrites. And if only we could bottle the hypocrisy. Uh, from green activists and turn that into electricity, we'd never have another blackout again. I'll tell you where, Linda, the criticism comes from me on this, right? So in the same way that the left would talk about the greenwashing of a fossil fuel company desperately trying to rechange its image by sponsoring a sporting club, right? If these people are literally going to an announcement about backing in a version of Australian industry that is about dealing with climate change because we've passed, uh, we're very close to, if not past, the point of no return... Don't you show your seriousness by trying to find the smallest footprint to get there, not, oh, we need to, because we've all got to come? Look, it's absolutely important that all elected leaders walk the walk, right? There's no argument about that. But let's not forget the time when Susan Lay charged the taxpayer to go to the Gold Coast to buy a $795,000 apartment off a Liberal donor. Let's not she forget the time... She wasn't trying to take your ute off you. Let's yeah. not forget the time when the Greens flew around the country. You know, Maureen mm. Faruqi flew to go to the ICC World Cup. I mean, we've got example after example of people in our elected class uh, off the back of the public dollar flying around the country or driving around the country on the public purse and using so okay these entitlements... Does it? Well, it's not OK. This is my point. Well, so uh, then uh, it's uh, not OK for the PM and Bowen to have done what uh, they've done, uh, right? I'm sure that they will put more effort into being more careful <laughs> next time. They got but I, I can understand why the public gets annoyed about this stuff. And I think when you look right across the parliament, uh, the public has a right to expect that... You know, people are going to behave prudently with the public dollar. Well, I, I'm fluent in Linda. She agrees with us. Um, now, let's let's talk here, Graham, about the actual fund itself. Now, now again, this is this philosophical idea, right, which is um, there are billions to be made and hundreds of thousands of jobs in the greening of Australia, right? So why does it need any taxpayer money to help push it along? But again, and I'm not suggesting there's anything nefarious at all about the company that Cannon Brooks and, and uh, Turnbull are involved in. But if they need five, ten, fifteen, twenty million dollars out of someone to build more uh, 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 solar panels, couldn't they just ask the billionaire or the multi-millionaire who owns their company for that money before they ask you and me to pay for it? Well, I think this is what the average person would think. What it displays is a complete lack of self-awareness on the part of the ruling class that, that extends to taking the airfares and then subsidising rich people to build panels that we know are going to be more expensive than the things we can currently get from overseas and then presumably subsidise households to buy them. Uh, th this looks like it has a lot 
more to do with politics than it does economics. I think we're going to see more of it. Uh, but uh, people will be scratching their heads as to why uh, rich people need money to do a commercial endeavour. Uh, I mean, if it doesn't make money, why do it? Yeah, I mean, again, Matt, part of this here is that I get that... that, that, that the best spin on this, right, is that it's a small industry that needs to grow to a, grow to a bigger industry and then it will be a flourishing one that end, will end up. But it's going to make the very people who were there in the early days pretty rich while those things exponentially grow, right? Take any other example of hypercapitalism and that's what ends up happening. But my issue is, is that these deals should also come with equity. Like, why doesn't it have a scenario where, all right, if you, if you need 10 million bucks off us, then we're going to get 5% of an asset that we might be able to sell later, our shares in it, or when this becomes a multi, multi, multi billion dollar company, it's a new source of revenue for governments. Or a loan, for example, that would yeah. be another way of doing that. And that's often what we did when we were in government. Um, the government is trying to do some of those things. So it was not clear why they couldn't issue this particular investment, uh, some kind of low concessional loan. Like, I, I do support government trying to uh, bring back more manufacturing to Australia. I do agree with Graham, though. This this particular decision seems to be totally driven by by politics, nothing to do with economics. I mean, they're going to the Hunter Valley and uh, ringing the death knell on the coal industry, despite the fact that we're exporting a record amount of coal. There's record demand for coal overseas. It makes no sense, but they obviously want to kill the Australian coal industry, and this is uh, them trying to make the medicine go down easier for people. Uh, and then, of course, you've got a glut of solar panels in the world right now. There's a, there's a total glut of them all around the world, uh, largely because of the subsidised industry that occurs in China. But there's no serious plan to deal with that. Uh, I mean, if we were serious about developing a domestic solar production industry here, uh, why wouldn't we tariff, put tariffs like or ban, like the Biden right. administration has done, those solar panel manufacturers who are using slave labour? Uh, why, why would we at all... Uh, consider putting solar panels on our roofs that are made from slave labour. Uh, and if the government were serious about supporting Australian solar production industry here, they would do that very minimum thing. The fact they're not, I think this is just actually for the PR. It's not really serious about yeah. developing an Australian solar production industry itself.